Hi, everyone. For those of you that are in the call right now, can you just give me a thumbs up if you can see my slides full screen? Just want to make sure we are good before I get started. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay, so we'll get started now and we'll see if some more people trickle in throughout. So hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me on this seminar. Um, so it's called Unlocking the Gateway to Medical School, Crafting a Seller Application for Success. Uh, my name is Claudia, and I am in first year, going into second year of medical school at Western, so at Schulich. Um, okay, sorry, just got to chat. Um, so it's so nice to have you all here. Thank you again for coming. Um, we are just going to go through some of the tips that I have for um, making a great application and how to send out, particularly focusing on the autobiographical sketch for today. Um, this is going to be kind of informal, so just let me know if you have any questions. Um, feel free to put them in the chat along the way. Um, and actually, just before we get started, would you guys um, be able to just let me know in the chat where you are in your medical school application journey? So I don't know if you guys are in high school, if you're an undergrad, um, if you're writing the MCAT this summer, uh, feel free to share that as well. Um, it would just be really great for me to know whereabouts you're at um, in your application journey, and then I can sort of gear my talk towards that. Currently studying for the MCAT. Wow. Okay. Good luck. Um, nobody loves an MCAT summer, so I feel for you, but keep studying. It's one one roadblock on the on the way to to becoming a physician for sure oh waiting for results okay fingers crossed fingers crossed yeah so it's definitely a big one yeah praying for you for sure <laughs> okay awesome so retaking okay yeah i did it twice so i i feel your pain Good luck this time around. Okay, so it sounds like people are sort of writing MCAT, getting their getting their applications together. So that's perfect. Okay. So just a little bit of housekeeping before we get into the presentation. So the seminar is going to be recorded. Um, I'll be presenting, like I said, some tips and tricks um, about the application. And then at the end, I'll be sharing what packages I have available. If you would like to work with me a little bit further, that is also an option. Um, and after the seminar, please feel free to reach out to me on Accepted Together. You can send me a message if you have any follow-up questions. Or again, like I said, if you have any questions during the seminar, please feel free to pop them in the chat. Okay, so me in a minute, just so you guys can get to know me a little bit better before we get started. Um, so I guess my journey to medical school started a while ago. Um, I was diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease or ulcerative colitis slash Crohn's disease. I don't know what exactly I have still, but one of those, if you guys know what those are, uh, when I was 10 years old. So that sort of introduced me to the world of medicine and also piqued my interest in potentially becoming a physician. Obviously at 10, I didn't know 100% sure uh, if that was what I wanted to do, but it was something that kind of went on the radar for me. And ever since I was diagnosed, I've sort of been involved in inflammatory bowel disease or IBD research ever since. Um, and also, um, I'm an advocate for that community and love doing fundraisers. So this picture on the left is us at um, the last gutsy walk for Crohn's and Colitis Canada, raising some funds for IBD research and patient partner programs. Um, so these are my sisters and our partner. And then in the middle is a picture of me and my husband. We got married actually July 23rd last year. So it's coming up on our one year anniversary. Last summer was kind of crazy. Um, got married and then came back, packed my stuff up and moved to London. <laughs> and we had a long distance relationship ever since. Um, so that's another aspect of who I am, a wife as well. Um, and I'm also a dog mom. So this is Scooter on the right. Um, we got him during COVID. So he's very much a COVID puppy. And also my roommate in London uh, couldn't get through medical school without this little buddy. So I would give him a little, a little acknowledgement here. So that's a little bit about me. Um, this is me 
very excited at my white coat ceremony. Um, finally finished the tumultuous journey to medical school once I got my acceptance the third time around applying. Um, so I'm hoping that I can use this next hour we have together to share my tips and tricks I have for the medical school application. Um, so hopefully one day you will have a picture just like this uh, once you get your acceptance to medical school. Okay, so here we go. What Oh, what is in a med school application? So lots of things. Sorry, my Zoom is being a little glitchy. Okay, there we go. So lots of things, as I'm sure you guys know, a few of you mentioned that you're writing the MCAT. Um, so that is a big hurdle um, that you have to sort of get through. Um, same thing with your GPA. So you need to have some sort of undergrad under your belt. Um, and not to discredit the MCAT and GPA, obviously those things are important, but today we're gonna be focusing, like I said, on the autobiographical sketch, which is another big part of the medical school application. Um, and also I'll just have a little plug at the end for essays, but basically all of the advice I'm gonna give you for your ABS can also be transferred onto any essays that you're writing. Um, so with that, I just wanted to say, make sure that you're looking up any school specific requirements that there are out there. You can use this QR code that will bring you to the OMSAS um, website where you can see what the requirements are for every school. Some have essays, some don't. Some have different, um, different deadlines, not so much the OMSAS schools, but schools in the East Coast. So I also applied to uh, Dalhousie and Newfoundland, Mun. And their deadlines are a little bit earlier than the Ontario deadline. So just be sure to keep that in mind if you're planning to apply elsewhere. Um, but if you're just applying to Ontario schools, then the deadline for you guys is October 2nd, 2023, which seems like a long way away, but it's going to fly in quickly. Um, and then another thing that you have to do is the CASPER, um, which is a situational judgment test, which can be done after you submit your application. I think you can start doing them in August if you wanted to, but I think there's dates up until November for that. And you'll also need some reference letters. Um, so my advice is to start super early uh, and leave time for edits and even multiple rounds of edits. You want to make sure that you can send your application around um, and get feedback on it from friends, family. If you send it to someone on Accepted Together, for example, as well. Um, and yeah, you want to make sure that you can have time to get that feedback back, but also incorporate those edits and make your application even stronger. So where do you start knowing that there are lots of things involved in a medical school application? So my advice to you would be to kind of sit down with yourself and have a little bit of a reflection on what brought you to this point in time and why you're applying to medical school. So it seems a little bit silly, but I think it's important to really reflect on this before you sort of dive into your applications. Um, you wanna think about the things that you've done that have led you to this point in applying, um, what your strengths are and really who are you and how those strengths will transition nicely to being a physician or having a career in medicine. Um, so for example, for my application, I had said, yes, I have experience as a patient and as an advocate. And at the time I was working um, in IBD research at SickKid. So I was seeing patients all the time. Um, and I kind of highlighted that while I recognize that I've been able to do a lot for patients and have sort of indirectly impacted patient care, I recognize that I'm limited at this point in time. And in working with the healthcare team, I realized that really who I am as a person and what I want out of a career is most in line with a physician. And that's what sort of brought me to this point of applying to medical school because I am limited in what I can do now for patients. So this to me was a logical next step. So that's sort of how I framed who I am and why medicine in a nutshell. <laughs> See, there, it's a, a lot more goes into that, but just to give you an idea. Um, and you really wanna make sure that you highlight your strengths in your application. So I would even just take a sticky note and write down a couple words that highlight who you are as a person and why they translate well to medicine. And I would also keep keep the sticky note if you want up until your interviews, which 
fingers crossed, you guys all get to that point in the medical school journey and try to make sure that those same attributes or strengths or skills come across at that point in time in your interview. So ultimately you kind of want to think, sit down, reflect, um, and think what you want somebody on the applications committee to get out of reading your application. Like, okay, Claudia, yep, she is an advocate, a leader, um, and a scholar, for example. Um, sit down and think about those things, what you want the admissions committee to get out of reading your application, and then what you want them to get out of your interview as well. Okay, so this is just a small plug for the CanMeds rules. So the CanMeds rules are uh, created by the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada, and they are sort of what outlines uh, what a physician should be. So we have medical expert in the middle that is a combination of all of those attributes. So a scholar, a professional, communicator, collaborator, leader, and health advocate. Um, so the CanMeds rules are what a lot of medical school curriculums are based out of. So they kind of um, try to make sure that all of the students that enter their school are all of these things by the time that they graduate and become a physician. So with that being said, because medical school curriculum hinges so strongly on this CanMeds framework, this is what a lot of schools use in their application process and review. So they likely have um, rubrics where they will judge how strong you are in all of these CanMeds um, rules, and that will be what determines if you get an interview and then similarly, what determines if you get an offer. So I thought I would bring this up. This is kind of gonna be the focus of the talk. Um, so I wanted to highlight it now and then we'll get back to it when we do specific ABS examples. Um, so like I said, try to think about your strengths and who you are. Um, and if they overlap to these CanMeds rules even better, that will only strengthen your application. <clears throat> okay. So I mentioned that we're gonna talk about the autobiographical sketch. Um, so what is that? Just quickly for people that may not know if this is your first time applying. Um, so it is sort of a detailed list of everything and anything you've ever done since you were 16, um, which seems a little bit overwhelming. There are a lot of things that you could have potentially done since then, um, but you only have 32 entries in total. And these categories fall under employment, volunteer, extracurriculars, awards and accomplishments and research. And then there's also an other category for things that may not fit the aforementioned categories. So 32 in total, keep that in mind. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the sketch and then we'll get into some specific examples in a little bit. Um, again, start early. I'm gonna hammer that home to you throughout the entire session. Um, it seems like, oh yeah, there's only 32 entries. That won't take me any time at all, but it's very tedious. And they ask a lot of questions. Um, so for example, if you're inputting an extracurricular activity, you need to put your title, what you did, um, how, what year of school you were in, how many hours a week or month, uh, what type of activity it was, and also a verifier. So there are a lot of things that go into the ABS, so starting early and saving yourself the headache of doing this rushed at the end will be really worthwhile in the long run. Um, I would say even to those of you writing the MCAT this summer, try to put away a little bit of time to do your applications as you're studying for the MCAT. I know that seems impossible to do, but even just 30 minutes a day or even 20 minutes will save you so much time in the long run and stress. So I would highly suggest trying to put some time away to do that. Um, this is something that's used by all OMSAS schools. So it's sort of, um, it's very important. Obviously a lot of schools are gonna be looking at this and it's worth the effort that you're gonna put into it. Try to get some input from friends and family. Um, so again, this is everything you've ever done since you were 16 years old. So you might not remember everything, um, I certainly didn't. I had to ask my mom about certain things, my partner. Um, there's a lot of things that you forget about. So try to get some input, not only 
on like the description of how you're wording things, but on what you actually did, you'll be surprised how much people remember um, that you forget. And then lastly, I would say, try to organize this on Google Docs. So there's a little QR code in the corner there that's for the template that I created for my own ABS. Um, I would say just double check the OMSAS categories. I don't think things have changed um, since I last applied, but just, yeah, double check. Um, it has all the categories that I mentioned on the previous slide and all of the questions within OMSAS that they ask you. So it's really nice to have it organized on Google Docs because you can really easily do edits. You can send it around to people, keep track of their edits. Um, and then when you go to do your OMSAS application, all you have to do is copy and paste and you're not going to be surprised by any of the questions that OMSAS asks you at the last minute. So you'll have everything ready to go. It's just going to be copying it over uh, in September or whenever you get around to doing your OMSAS application. So yeah, like I mentioned, this Google, sorry, this QR code will bring you to the Google Doc template for that. Um, so please make use of that. I think it would it will save you guys some time and some hassle in the long run. Um, and I have a little tip here. So when I deleted my entries, it also deleted the um, all of the formulas that I had in it, but a formula that is really helpful um, is for the number of characters cell in Google Docs. If you use this formula, so equals length of cell, and then you highlight your description um, cell, it will actually add up how many characters your description is. So you don't have to guess how long your descriptions are. It's really nice, it takes the guesswork out of it. You can do everything all in this Google Doc. So highly recommend doing that. So again, the least amount of surprises you have come October, uh, the better. And then here are just some general tips for the ABS. So I talked about counting number of characters. They are really short. They're only 150 characters. So kind of like a tweet like this, Wendy's tweet being sassy back at, at McDonald's for their ice cream machine not working. Um, they are short. So you really have to make sure that you are getting your point across in this very, very small description. Um, so I would say in order to do that and make that possible, try to use appropriate short forms wherever you can. And I underlined appropriate because you wanna make sure that you use short forms that are um, common knowledge that people will know about. Um, you don't wanna be making up your own short forms and having the applications committee try to guess what you mean. Um, you wanna make it, take the guesswork out of it for them. They have a lot of applications to review and they don't wanna get caught up trying to understand what you wrote. Um, so for example, if you wanna use the plus sign for and, that's something that I did throughout my application. I would just say one tip for that. If you do your short forms, this is maybe just a me thing because I'm a little bit, a little bit anal when it comes to details, but try to be consistent in the short forms that you use. So if you're saying that you're gonna use plus for and, use that throughout the entire um, ABS. Um, and also be specific. So like I said, there's only so many characters you can use to get across. We they really wanna know what you did in that activity, not um, what other people did, for example. So you want to really outline what your role was um, and using metrics is really helpful so for example saying you were um, you led a team of x amount of people um, you raised so much money for a fundraiser you really want to be as specific um, with your role but also numerically as possible i think that will will be a benefit to you um, my other piece of advice would be to write out all of the activities um, that you've done and then sort of work backwards and edit from there and figure out what's gonna be in your top, I don't know, 32. I'm not saying you need to have 32 entries, but what's gonna make the cut for your ABS. So it's easier to just sort of word dump on paper and then work backwards from that. And then when you get into medical school, when, not if, when you get into medical school, keep adding on to that ABS. Um, this is more of a reminder to myself because I need to add in what I've been doing this year, but keep adding to that ABS. And then when you go to apply for residency, you're going to have everything all on one piece of paper, one spreadsheet at Bible. Um, and I would also say quality over quantity is important. So uh, a lot of medical schools tend to favor activities that you've done 
uh, longitudinally, so over a couple of years, for example, over shorter snippets of activities, like if you've done a bunch of volunteer work for a month at a time, um, I would say if you're trying to tease out which um, which entries are going to make it, try to pick that one that you've been doing for a longer period of time that is, again, meaningful to you and helps create that picture of who you are and why you want to do medicine. Uh, reach out to your verifiers early as well. Um, so you don't have to have your ABS entries all up to date and ready to go to do this. You just have to know what activities generally you think you're going to include. And then reach out to those verifiers. Um, OMSAS needs their email and phone number. I think they reach out to email first and then if they can't get a hold of them, they will call. You really want to make sure that it is contact information that's up to date because if they can't reach the verifiers, um, that could reflect poorly on your application. So just keep that in mind. And also you want to make sure that you incorporate the Canvas rules throughout your ABS. You guys are going to be so tired of me saying this by the end of this talk. Okay, so now we're going to do an edited example. So an example of an ABS entry that we're going to make a little bit better and the tips that I have for this. So this is something that I would be doing, for example, if I was editing your ABS. So this is a real life story. So I was a merchandise supervisor at Canada's Wonderland. I worked there for quite a number of summers growing up and absolutely loved it. So this is an example of an APS entry explaining what I did there. So worked with a team of 15 employees across six stores, including the sweet shop. I was responsible for balancing money and having good customer service. So that is an okay description. There's nothing really super wrong with that. It does capture what I did there, um, but how can we make things a little bit better? Again, keeping the Kenma's rules in mind and the fact that it's only 150 characters. So with this edited example, so now it reads, maintain exceptional professionalism and customer service, perform multiple tasks simultaneously in a dynamic environment, in viral for short, and manage 15 plus employees, six stores. So I took out some words. So for example, I took out the store name, including the sweet shop. I don't think that's a detail that they probably need to know. They already are going to know that you worked at Wonderland because they are reading your title. So they do know that. Um, didn't think that that was a detail that was important. So scrapped that and saved the characters on that. Um, here I said I was responsible for having good customer service, customer service, which is okay. Um, but in this elevated example, I said that I maintained exceptional professionalism and customer service. So professionalism is one of the CanMeds roles. So just having that word in there sort of highlights that role um, within this position that I held. Um, and then also I did, I did a lot of things at the same time in a dynamic environment and wanted to capture that. And I think the way that this is worded helps to draw parallels to medicine. So you're going to be doing lots of things um, in an ever-changing pace. Um, and yeah, it's going to be fascinating to keep up with it. So I think highlighting that that's something that you've done before um, is good and looks nice on the medical school application. And then at the end, I said manage instead of worked with, which is true because I was a leader on this team. So you really want to highlight that if you are managing people, leading people, instead of saying you're working with or collaborating with. Um, if you had that leadership position, you wanna highlight that you are the leader in that scenario. Um, and then just some short forms for you. So I used plus for and, um, that was everywhere in my application. And then 15 plus employees, six stores. So got away with a little bit less words there too. So that's just one example of an elevated ABS entry. Um, now we're going to go through, I picked out specifically the leader and scholar traits within the CanMeds roles, and I'm going to show you some of my ABS entries that um, highlight that I have those certain characteristics. Okay, so this first ABS entry um, was when I was the co-president for the Neuroscience Association um, at my school. So I did an undergrad in neuroscience and then I was sort of leading the club that had an influence on the neuroscience program. 
So that's kind of a little bit of a background of what that position was. And then on the right hand side here, this is a screenshot from that CanMeds framework. So if you just search it up on Google, you'll see that um, little Venn diagram that existed at the beginning of these slides. And then you'll also have links to all of the um, parts within the framework. So this is if you click on the leader and you scroll down, um, it actually gives you a list of what a position as a leader should be able to do. Um, so you can use these descriptions. They're really, really helpful to try and create your ABS or just try to see what they're looking for um, for a position to have in a bunch of different capacities. Um, so for example, a physician as a leader is supposed to contribute to improving healthcare delivery um, and improving systems of patient care. Um, so in this example, yes, I'm not a physician yet, um, but in this example, I was working to improve the student experience for those that were in the same program as me. So I think that's important. You know, I mentioned that I was fostering a community and again, uh, specifics are important. So 900 students were the amount of students in my program. Um, so that sort of highlights that first aspect of being a leader. And then also just demonstrating leadership in professional practice. So um, physicians are supposed to demonstrate leadership skills to enhance healthcare. So similarly, I was demonstrating leadership skills to enhance the student experience. So a little bit same, same, but different. Um, you can really just try to extrapolate these things to your own ABS and your own personal experiences and just try to make things work from there. Um, another thing I wanted to highlight is if you were elected to a leadership position, you should highlight that um, because that just proves that they chose you out of however many people um, to lead that organization. So that's something you might want to highlight. It's like a little extra uh, bonus. Um, and how many people you led, how many events you organized. So you can see it's very uh, detailed. Okay, so somebody asked, um, in your opinion, what if you had multiple positions in one club, would you create multiple entries or one entry for each club? Um, okay, so I think you mean if you had multiple positions within one club, would you have that as one entry or multiple entries? Okay, so I think that that depends on your ABS and again, how many entries you have. If you think that it's something that um, is important to include for sure. Um, you can have multiple entries. If you don't have enough space on your ABS and you're trying to make it in one entry, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But what you can do in your description, if you want to highlight that you had different positions, you could say, you know, um, elected to this position from whatever you were before, just so it kind of gets across that you were different things. Um, and you can also highlight that in the length of time. You can make sure you have however long you were involved in that organization um, as part of the dates. So it does get a little bit messy. You kind of have to play around with what, um, what your entries are and how much space you have. But yeah, it's, it's very dependent on your ABS, but great question. Okay, so now we're gonna do another example um, from a leadership perspective. So for this example, I was on the health and well, no problem, on the health and wellness committee. This was during my master's um, and I was responsible for organizing events to promote health and wellness and to make sure that students were balancing work in life um, while in grad school. So if we look at what a leader is supposed to be, um, according to Ken Med's rules, this, like you wouldn't necessarily really think that this is part of being a leader, but it's there. Um, being able to set priorities and manage time, uh, implement processes to ensure personal practice improvement. Um, so trying to make sure that you take time for yourself, have a life outside of medicine, that's all part of being a leader, which you wouldn't necessarily think, but it's nice to see it from the Ken Med's perspective. Um, so this could sort of work for that. Like, yes, I was 
an executive on a club, which obviously demonstrates leadership skills, but it's a little bit more than being a leader. It's also trying to have this work-life balance and helping other people set priorities and manage their time to ensure that they have optimal wellness while in grad school. So you can see how you can sort of make certain examples work for things that you um, need to fill within your application. You just sort of have to play this little game with the CanMeds rules and your ABS. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to some examples of the Scholar framework. Sorry, this might be a little bit small. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Okay, so for this example, um, I was a patient partner for Crohn's and Colitis Canada um, and worked to develop some consensus statements, basically trying to to enhance the transition from pediatric to adult care experience for those with IBD. Um, I believe this was actually in my research. Yeah, in my research part of my ABS. So in the fourth column, you can see that I said that I was a contributing author to a paper that was submitted. Um, so that's something you can highlight in the research section. Um, I guess actually just to note, if a paper is submitted, so if you're working on something and it's not officially published yet, still put that in your application. A lot of work goes into even getting to the point of submitting an um, submitting a paper, excuse me. So you should definitely highlight that. It's not a bad thing to say that it's submitted. Um, they kind of recognize that, that things take time. So I would just put that on there, especially if you're just waiting to hear back. Um, Okay, yeah, so for this example, um, so you can see the first part of section three, uh, being a scholar talks about recognizing uncertainty and knowledge gaps in clinical um, encounters and trying to generate focus questions that address them. So in this uh, position, I was basically using my own life experiences and the gaps that I experienced in my own care to create the guidelines for how patients should be transitioning from pediatric to adult care in this population. Um, this also doesn't necessarily have to be like a purely research-based thing. It can be something that you realized there was a gap in, um, I don't know, something within your community and you decided that you wanted to, um, to change that for the better. It doesn't necessarily have to be a research project. It doesn't have to be a paper that you're trying to submit. It can be anything that you recognize that there is room for improvement on and that you worked to try to fill in that gap. So there's ways that you can make it work um, within this scholar bracket. And I just want to put this out there. You definitely do not need research experience to get into medical school. Obviously, it's good. It's a nice bonus. But if you don't have research experience, do not stress about it, especially not at this point in time. There are people in my class who don't even come from a science background who switched careers from finance from engineering so they really don't even have um the same like apt for research that exists in this pre-med um i would say society um and they're they're still in my medical class so i wouldn't get too hung up on it i just want to show you um what scholar can look like and how you can change that to fit your own abs and scholar doesn't mean research. Okay, um, the next one, okay, I have another research example, but um, we will talk through this. So this was an undergraduate research experience that I did. Um, and okay, so yeah, this is also within scholar section four here. Um, so contributing to the creation and dissemination of knowledge and practices. Um, so, for this, it was a poster presentation and also an oral presentation. Um, so that just touches on the section four of being a scholar, how you are able to, this section 4.5 specifically, uh, summarize and communicate to professional and lay audiences. Um, so again, this doesn't have to necessarily be a research project that you are communicating. 
you can be giving a talk, you can be a guest on a podcast, um, you can be a lecturer, any, anything that you had to um, communicate to a different audience, whether that be an audience of professionals, a lay audience, that's important to highlight. And that counts as a scholar, according to the Ken, the Ken Meds rules. So just something to keep in mind. Um, and also, if you were the second author, this is just uh, another little tidbit of advice. So this first section here, like best poster and IVD at this meeting, I did not present the poster there. Um, but I was the second author on the poster, so I still put this on my ABS. So just highlighting, you can be second author, that is totally fine. The second one was one that I actually did the oral presentation for. So just highlighting how you can showcase how exactly you were involved. Okay, and for this next example, so this also falls within being a scholar. And this is in the realm of teaching. So I was a teaching assistant for a course, um, for an undergraduate course. And yeah, some people wouldn't think that this counts as being a scholar, but of course, being a teacher, a teacher's assistant, if you teach in other capacities, for example, if you run swimming lessons or dance lessons or you're a camp counselor, all those things count. Um, it's just sort of reframing your mind to think in, again, these Ken Meds rules and see how you can spot certain activities in and highlight that you are all of the things that they're looking for. Um, so yeah, promoting a safe learning environment, um, ensuring patient safety, but ensuring learner safety, for example, you can really make it work to whatever activity you want it to. Um, and again, just a little tip or advice. Um, so I am explicit in how many students I TA'd, um, delivered well-received guest lecture. If you actually gave a survey to people, for example, and they rated you 4.9 out of five, you could put that on there. I didn't have the stats for that, so I just sort of left it as that. Um, but yeah, the more details, the better. Um, and another thing I mentioned was that I enhanced student learning by hosting office hours and tutorials. So that sort of goes towards um, promoting a safe or open or inclusive learning environment where people are constantly coming to you for help and guidance, all counts as being a scholar. I think that was the last slide that I had. Yeah, so I will just um, say, so these were some tips for ABS for highlighting specifically the leader and scholar sections of the CanMeds framework. Um, I would take these same tips and the same advice for when you're writing your essays. Um, I was trying to fit it all into one talk, but I realized there is a lot to go through. Um, so I would highly recommend going through your um, going through your essays and again, doing that deep reflection of why medicine, how you got to this point in time and working through the KenMeds framework to try to uh, make your experiences sort of fit onto um, the framework and the different qualities and traits of what makes a physician. Um, feel free at this point in time to put any questions you may have in the chat and I will get to them. Um, just on this very second last slide. So the talk was titled Crafting a Stellar Application for Success. So this is just a little plug. Um, if you want to work with me, I can help you craft your own stellar application. And so these are some of the packages that I have ongoing right now. So I have a package for ABS editing um, that includes an hour and a half of me editing your ABS and also half an hour of us meeting and going over the edits that I suggested to you. Um, if you want a second round, so where I take the feedback that I gave you, you go on and um, edit your ABS entries and then come back to me. We can do another round of edits. Um, those exist for the ABS. And then also U of T essays, same thing, round one, round two, and Western essays as well. So if you're looking to apply to any of these schools or even other schools outside of this, I'll have a general package just for um, essays in general. I can help you there too. 
Um, and if you're not quite sure, um, if you just have any general questions, um, or if you are not quite at the point of applying yet, but have questions that you want to get answered, you can book a general consultation with me too. Okay, so I will leave this slide up while we go through some Q&A. Um, but yeah, please reach out to me on acceptedtogether.com if you have any further questions. This QR code here will bring you to my profile where you can message me if you have any questions or if you want to take a look, a closer look at the packages that I have or book with me, you can do that here as well. Um, just out of appreciation for you guys coming tonight and spending this hour with me, we have a coupon code for you. Um, it is 10 off. So if you go to book with me and you type in 10 off, when it asks you for a coupon, you'll save 10% on any package that you're booking with me there. So thank you so much again for coming tonight. I'm just going to stop the recording and then we'll do a Q&A for a little.